Williams. I'm the managing editor of Life VR, which is an extension of the iconic Life magazine brand. It's also um, an umbrella brand for all uh, virtual reality that uh, is um, from Time Inc. brands, which includes all of these. So I uh, develop and produce um, 360 video, VR, and AR experiences for Time, Sports Illustrated, People, Entertainment Weekly, Travel and Leisure, Food and Wine, In Style Essence, the list goes on and on and on. Um, and I'll kind of blow through the first few slides here because the interesting stuff is really towards the end. But broadly, I create two different kinds of VR experiences. One is 360, where you as the viewer are at a fixed position. Um, looking at spherical video around you. In this case, you can't walk into the experience. There's uh, usually very limited interactivity. You're not picking up objects. Um, in the second version, which is PC-based VR, you are generally tethered to a high-powered computer, and you're in a CGI environment that's um, fully interactive. So I'll talk through some examples of projects that we've made in both uh, formats, um, but I'm going to kind of spend more time on the latter. There's varying degrees of immersion. We'll kind of get through this as we talk through the projects. Um, in 360 video, you're either looking at content that was captured with a 360 video camera or created in CGI. These can be monoscopic or stereoscopic. You can view them um, either kind of magic window style on your phone, um, on desktop in 360 video players, or with a mobile-based um, VR headset like cardboard or Samsung uh, gear. Um, this year early, we covered both the inauguration and the Women's March in 360 video. This was published to Time's website and their Facebook 360, uh, and, and Facebook 360 on their Facebook page. Um, we've created documentary and educational 360 experiences, notably um, an experience with Ken Burns that recreates a rescue mission from Nazi-occupied Germany to Ellis Island, where you get to see the entire New York skyline as it appeared in uh, the 1940s. Uh, we did Travel and Leisure's Destination of the Year last year in VR as a VR travel guide. We um, distributed for Lucasfilms two Star Wars experiences. They're super fun. All of these you can watch in the Life VR app, which is free for iOS and Android, and you don't necessarily need a headset to watch it. You can watch everything Magic Window style on your phone. And then um, this last project, Capturing Everest, we released about three weeks ago with Sports Illustrated. It was a cover story for SI. It was a four-part docu-series that is the first VR um, experience to take you from the bottom to the top of Mount Everest. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the AR activation that we folded into that at the end. Um, and now we're going to move into real-time rendered experiences. So these are experiences you're watching on one of the higher-end headsets, like an Oculus Rift or a Vive. Um, you are tethered uh, at this point to a computer. Um, and what you're watching is happening. It's rendering in real time. It's a CGI environment that you are interacting with. So I'll give you um, a few examples of experiences we've created in this vein. The first one is uh, Buzz Aldrin, Cycling Pathways to Mars. Um, time has become very well known for covering uh, human space exploration. We have a great relationship with Buzz. And we created, um, with a company called 8i that makes volumetric holograms, um, a VR hologram of Buzz Aldrin. And he uh, first takes you to his landing site on the moon, talks about that historical moment, and then he takes you to Mars to show you his plan for how humans could colonize the planet. So I'll just show you very briefly a clip from this. Oh, looks like we lost our video. No videos? <laughs> OK, no videos. Um, Oh, great. So this experience is available for the Vive through Viveport and Steam. We also took it to the Air and Space Museum for two days and showed a bunch of uh, people of varying ages the experience, which was super fun to see their reactions. Um, the next experience is Lumen. Uh, this is an experience I created with Dr. Walter Greenleaf at Stanford's Virtual Human Interaction Lab. It's actually meant to calm you in under five minutes. We begin with a diaphragmatic breathing exercise, and then we put you into a bioluminescent for forest where you control the growth of the trees in the forest around you with headset gaze. Everything moves at sort of a slower pace so that you are forced to kind of slow down, 
calm yourself and um, relax. And it's now being used in pre and post op procedures at Stanford's uh, Children's Hospital. The next project is Remembering Pearl Harbor. It's um, created for the 75th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. We worked with the World War II Museum and one of the oldest living veterans of the attack to tell the story through his eyes of the uh, aftermath of the attack and the days that followed. Um, we tell it in sort of three acts, and in the first act, we put you in an archetypal American home. Every single object in that home is interactive and historically accurate. They come from the World War II Museum. We recreated them in CGI. You can pick up every single thing. You're hearing FDR give his Day of Infamy speech on the radio on the day and time that someone would have received it at home. And you have um, periodicals that someone would have had uh, so you can see the headlines that people were receiving, exactly the information that they had on the home front. We then take you to uh, the harbor itself, where you get to see the huge columns of smoke, the ships on fire, uh, exactly what the destruction um, looked like in the aftermath of the attack. Lastly, um, I'm just going to show you quickly our first AR activation with Sports Illustrated. Um, this uh, came with the launch of an AR camera in the Life VR app. As of this launch, every single um, Time Inc. title is now AR enabled. And we can do a lot of different things with AR, but I'll just give you a taste of how it looks. So this was the cover of Sports Illustrated for a Capturing Everest project. And if we could play the next video, there should have been a video in there. This will give you a little demo of how the AR activation works. So we launch you from a Coors ad, Coors was the sponsor for the project, into a 360 trailer for capturing Everest. This all happens within the same app that you can also watch the four part docu-series uh, capturing Everest within. Um, with AR, we can now make all of our uh, magazines interactive. We can make them shoppable. We can make any printed or uh, object with an image on it um, AR enabled as well. So a product, a poster, a billboard, um, pretty much anything that the camera in the phone can recognize as an image. Um, so with that, there's a few key takeaways. I don't think I really have time to talk through them. Um, but if you want to take a snap and look at them later, happy to explain any of this further uh, in the lobby. Thank you.